Hey, what's up everybody and welcome to my Impact Wrestling Review Fallout show from Slammiversary last Saturday. A lot of things happened on that show last Saturday, so please check out my review to Slammiversary. I did have that show reviewed. Uh, I almost spent an hour talking about it, but coming into Impact tonight uh, with a lot of changes. Some would say a new era has dawned upon us right now with the multiple debuts and returns. Um, since Saturday, a lot has changed now. And what is going to be the landscape of Impact Wrestling since coming in from Slammiversary of last Saturday? So what do we do? We kick it off with a video, though, from EC3. Um, EC3 was standing somewhere in, I guess, in some dark room. Of course, he had his number three on the screen, you know, the ones in chalk and whatnot. And he talked about uh, with politicians, corporations, media, Love, entertainment, control the minds of people and ages and whatnot. And that those factors are taking away your free will. And that you're not able to um, conform and whatnot. And that you have to fight against, fight back against those factors. Fight back against everyone that's tried to steal and betray you and whatnot. EC3 pretty much said that um, you got to fight against uh, tyrants who try to humiliate you or try to cancel you and you need to find purpose in your life and find enlightenment he says and he focused on um on something he said he talked about controlling your narrative and that you need to live in this moment because that's what he's going to do tonight he's going to live in this moment so you need to control your narrative as he's been kind of saying on the internet lately also and he says you have been warned so um, number one, really, um, really different, I should say, for EC3. This isn't the same EC3 that was an impact that we knew about a few years ago and whatnot. This isn't the rich, um, you know, snobby EC3 and whatnot with the trouble, trouble, trouble. This is more of a darker EC3. We know he kind of has a new look with a mustache and a haircut and whatnot. So it is a different EC3. I don't know what he has planned. I just know it's more of a darker version as he's talking about. I guess media and stuff and governments trying to control us and everything and the whole they're trying to cancel you and whatnot that you have to fight back against all those those tyrants or whatnot and to control your own narrative. So that's the word that's we he's been saying a lot. Control your own narrative. I've enjoyed the I did enjoy the video. I have, now I know he did put out there was a seven minute video that Impact put out. I recommend checking that out too. It, um it's really good. I, I would check it out because this is not the same EC3, okay? This isn't the same one that was an impact a few years ago, or even the one they kind of put in WWE, which really didn't do nothing since they didn't... Come on, even NXT didn't even really use the guy that well. I kind of said it before, there was just too many people that was kind of better him at the time of NXT, and then he just ended up being on Raw, jobbing at anybody, and barely even showing up on the show itself until his, you know, release and whatnot. So... With EC3 returning back um, to the company once came from, uh, it's going to be different. I don't know how different, but it's going to be a more darker EC3. Like I said, this isn't the, you know, the rich one or the, you know, just the one with a the cool theme song or trouble, trouble, trouble and whatnot. This is a different EC3. Okay, so I don't know what what's going to be planned. But it was a very good promo he did cut at the beginning of the show. Impact also had a new intro, I see, also. Um, so there was a new intro. Uh, intro to, from the last one they got. Uh, we did kick off with a rematch with Chris Bay going against Willie Mack for the X Division Championship. A match that I was surprised that went on pretty quick, too. And I was almost surprised how um, Chris Bay went over clean again after dodging Mack's um, six-star frog splash. Uh, Chris Bay hit that springboard cutter for the win. Um, I guess I was surprised the outcome from Saturday, but then I was surprised they did a rematch and then it went back kind of quick too. And I don't know what this means for Willie Mack or what they're going to be doing with him next. Cause obviously I think they're taking him out of the X division or something's going on. I don't know if that's something to do. He's going to go back with Swan again, but I feel like Swan's going to be in a feud with Eric Young, or maybe they want to position Mack to be a main eventer now in this. Uh, I know he had the X division title, but try to make him a main player, something I'm not saying over to get the world title right now, but make him like a credible threat to the world title or whatnot or something. Because they, they've been doing okay with the Mac when building him lately, especially when he became the um, X Division champion. I was just surprised that um, Chris Bay was able to be the one to take it off him. And then I'm surprised they they did a rematch right now. So I don't know what's going on with the Mac and why uh, he lost to Chris Bay this fast. But it was kind of surprising though. 
Um, next, they did go to the Madison Rain, Josh Matthews, talking about everything that went on to anniversary last Saturday and what's going to go on tonight. But we did have next was the Good Brothers, Machine Gun Carl Anderson, and uh, the Big LG, Doc Gallows, Luke Gallows, whatever you want to call them. They went to commercial break after that, but when they came back, uh, they were in the ring. Carl Anderson said, hey, yo, which he said he always wanted to do that, but... You know, he told, um, you know, LG there, you know, you've been uh, drinking a lot of protein lately. Uh, you look massive right now, right? You look real big uh, working out in quarantine. But Carl Anderson went on like that. The rumor has been swirling for months now to where the Good Brothers were going to land. Huh? Where are they going to go? And that they have arrived in Impact and it's anniversary. They made a trend worldwide on Twitter because they are the Good Brothers and that, um, you know, with the Good Brothers in, you won't have to have a best tag team in the world because you got the big, best big man in the business and the best wrestler in the world of, you know, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. But um, they said, listen, you guys need to go uh, shop our merchandise. I guess they were sold out of it, but uh, they'll restock soon to get some Good Brothers merchandise and that you could check out their uh, pay-per-view coming up August 1st. Uh, the Good Brothers uh, might have some type of fight TV thing going on. Uh, Talking Shop of Mania, I think it's like a... Like some, I think Talking Shop is a talk show, but Talking Shop of Mania is coming, so uh, it's gonna be rated TVMA. And all you need a recipe around here is just a Magic Killer, a three count, and we don't even need a two sweet nowadays. So I guess they're not gonna be in Bullet Club right now. But um, Gals and Anderson, they said, no, how about we celebrate a couple beers just being here right now? But before they could even drink, Ace Austin and Madman Fulton came out. Ace said, listen, I forgive you guys for what y'all did Saturday and what. Now you guys want to make a statement, but. I want an apology right now, okay? We can all have some beers and celebrate and whatnot. And he understands what they were trying to do. But he said that Mad Man Fulton was one of the best big men in the biz. He said, business. He said, uh, so you guys can apologize. We can toast and whatnot. But it looks like they weren't going to do that. He knocked the beer. Um, Ace Austin knocked the beer off of Gals and Anderson's hands. And he said it wasn't much of a beer guy. The Good Brothers ended up brawling with Ace and Fulton, which they got the upper hand, throwing them out of the ring then. So I don't know what's going to come from this, but... Uh, most likely a tag match, but um, it was a good debut, I guess, you know, on Impact TV in general and anniversary, and we got a promo from both Gals and Anderson. Guests basically reintroducing themselves, lest you don't know who they are and where they came from, which they've been in other companies before, but, you know, now that, now that they're in Impact now, it's going to give you a, give you a refresher to who the hell these guys are right now so you can know who they are. Uh, but after that, they then went to uh, Heath Slater, I should say, but uh, they were asking him who he was on the list. He was trying to get into the building, but um, they said uh, Heath. He said, "What's your last name?" And Heath said, "I'm just, I'm just going by Heath now. And, uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not allowed to use that last name anymore. So we're just gonna go with Heath for right now. And um, I'm just not gonna be calling him Heath Slater, but um, since he didn't see uh, Heath's name on the list, uh, Heath said he was going to go uh, call someone. I guess he was calling Rhino because Rhino did tell him to come back to the show this Tuesday. And they went to Rhino, I guess, arguing with Hernandez. I guess they're still arguing about that money from last week. And we're going to do a match tonight, and uh, we'll see who gets that money. So Heath there is still not able to um, get to Rhino right now, which we almost almost like the same storyline some say would say on SmackDown before when he tried to get into the building on um you know, building back then. He can't get in the building right now. So, Heath, I don't know where uh, he's a free agent or whatever next show he's going to appear on. But right now, um, he's out there with Rhino and whatnot. So, uh, if he can get to Rhino. But we'll come back to that soon enough. Uh, Chris Bay, I guess, was celebrating with two other women in the back. And I guess he had a drink for one of them until uh, Rohit Raju came in. Uh, Chris Bay, why, why are you here? What that Rohit said, you know, you've got a target on your back right now. Uh, so if you um, need somebody to wrestle, and Chris Bay, listen, I'll call you if I need some help. He left, and um, pretty much uh, Chris Bay blamed the uh, girls. Like, who let this loser in the room? So I don't know what they do with Rohit Raju sometime, other than being the designated loser in all of this. But hopefully something can change for that guy pretty soon. Next, we got a tag team match. Uh, Kara Hogan and Tasha Steeles versus Jessica Havoc and Nevaeh. Good tag match, I should say. I'm sure they're still trying to build those knockouts tag titles, but not a bad match. It ended up in a DQ uh, because um, Tasha came in with the 
chair. Uh, she hit Havoc with it because Havoc was about to tombstone Kara Hogan. But since Havoc no sold it, Nevea ended up taking the chair and hit Tasha with it. And then next thing you know, Havoc hit the uh, tombstone onto uh, Kara Hogan right there. So, yeah, not a bad tag match, but we know they've been kind of in a feud uh, at the same time, too. So, like I said, I still think it's going to be tag titles come back. T- tag titles come back for the knockouts again since they've signed so many women. So, I don't know where it's going to come from this, but uh, like I said, they got a lot of tag teams built up for this. Sammy Callahan was talking to Ken Shamrock, blaming him for what happened in Slammiversary, and Shamrock pretty much says he accepted the criticism, but nobody's harder on the harder or tougher than himself. And he says, "You want to talk to me? Talk to me next week." Uh, Rob Van Dam and Katie Forbes were in the back kind of promo as RVD talked about how it's been a lot of changes in Impact and uh, a lot of changes for the better. He says, which I. Could not agree with him more because um, last time RVD was doing was hanging around with Joey Ryan. And thank God that doesn't happen, have to happen anymore. I don't know what's going to happen to Jake Chris right there. Hopefully they can find something for him. But um, yeah, they, RVD, I guess he's going to just go back to being regular RVD. I don't know what plans they would have had with that whole cancel culture and Joey Ryan. But um, I'm just glad I don't have to see Joey Ryan r- around RVD anymore. Okay. I guess I still give RVD credit for not taking that stupid dick flip spot. So I'm glad he did not agree to do that shit and still beat him straight up. But I don't know. I guess, like I said, it's no more cancel culture group and whatnot. We just got RVD. And Kay Forbes says, you know, she doesn't like to wear clothes. And, you know, punish. that was just to punish the fans. But now, you know, it's all about punishing herself. Now she's talking about their, her new website where everybody can see her body and everything. And uh, does just need to see the fans and that, you know to see the photos but next week you won't have to because next week it's going to be free 99 so basically this sounds like something for only fans if you have a website or whatnot then again women make a lot of money off of this to what i hear but and almost like she's advertising the only fans um type of website right now or account with people coming to see photos or videos or whatnot that's basically um what it looked like she was trying to advertise so We'll see what happens next week with that. But, hey, I'm just kind of glad RVD's not hanging around Joy Ryan anymore. Rhino went against Hernandez for the uh, Wada Cash. They were fighting in that weird cinematic fight last week. Hernandez has a big mustache now, I should say, too. It ended up with Hernandez giving the ref for money. And then Rhino ended up hitting him with a gore. And it was over. I'm glad that was quick because I didn't need to see that long of a fight like it was last week. Of whatever it was just for a wad of money. But... Yeah, we keep it quick, and it was done after that. Uh, the North cut a promo on the Mercy Machine Guns. Talk about how they're going to retain the titles tonight. Uh, I mean, yeah, for a mystery person coming in, which I think it is Kurt Hawkins or Brian Myers coming in, because he did have a mask, but I kind of could tell by the color scheme and the boots. And I think it is going to be Brian Myers, or like I said, it's formerly known as Kurt Hawkins, which... We've seen Brian Myers for here a little in his company, but also for Global Force and then went back to WWE. And I guess now he's coming to Impact again. So, like I said, I believe that was Brian Myers that's going to be coming in. Uh, Gia Miller was interviewing Deanna Perazzo as they wanted to know her plans as champion. As Deanna talked about dislocating Jordan Grace's shoulder, she talked about there's no competition right now, so I can just go take a break. Next thing you know, Kylie Ray came in since Kylie Ray won that gauntlet match on Saturday. She's now the number one contender for Deanna Perazzo's title. And she wanted to shake her hand and everything. She was very happy about it. And, you know, Deanna pretty much tried to put her into an arm bar then. Kylie got out of it. Next thing you know, Alicia Edwards and Kimberly pretty much broke it up the whole both the women back after that. So I guess we know what the next challenge is uh, for, uh, for the knockouts title. Uh, next, the new world champion came out, Eddie Edwards. Eddie Edwards came out. Um, he talked about him being the champion right now. And he, he held it up. He held it up and he said he can finally call himself the world champ again. And he talked about a lot of broke relationships and friendships and a lot of hardships to get back in root for this championship. But now his journey is in the past and now a new journey has begun. And he's been missing something in recent years. And uh, stability, he said. And that the locker room, and the, the locker room needs something, and that he wants to be a champion. That the locker room and the company can be proud of. Um, that's those are some really good words to really say right now when it comes to this title after the last champion. But Eddie Edwards um, pretty much said he's doing this for the fans at home. 
He said the only thing harder than becoming a champion is staying the world champion because now you have a target on your back. And people called him crazy in the past, but he's a fighting world champion. And he's going to defend his title every week to anyone who deserves a shot for this belt. And Eddie Primer said that, you know, it's living proof that anything is possible. And that he would say stability and credibility. He would bring, you know, stability and credibility back to this world title. Next thing you know, Eric Young comes out and talks about Eddie Edwards. But Eddie cut him off talking about what he did to... um Rich Swan on Saturday that, you know, Swan is his friend and that Swan could not be able to walk again. And the only thing that Eric Young deserves right now is an ass kicking. But EY pretty much says pathetic that Eddie thinks that um he could have any say in the world title and that this place belongs to Eric Young now. And that Eddie should be thankful because um, you know, Swan just got my caught my crosshairs and that's you. Uh EY pretty much went on to say that um nothing right now has anything to do with your journey and that EY um, pretty much made a he had a situation and so uh, he was going to be the one to take that title and before he could say anything else Eddie Edwards ended up pretty much in a dive on him then right after referees pulled him apart Eric Young got a cheap shot on him before he left so there you go um, like I said I'm sure EY's probably coming for that title now also I don't think it's going to be a match next week or two but it's coming and I got Something built up for him, Eddie Edwards, right now. Not a bad promo from Eddie Edwards. It's not crazy Eddie talking. It's almost like regular Eddie Edwards talking. So it was not even that bad of a promo he cut out there, too. It was pretty good. So at least he's trying to bring credibility back to the world championship. I will say that. Um, <clears throat> but right after um, his segment, um, GM Miller ended up going to... Um, Moose asking him about his whole TNA world title with the IC. He's got the white strap on. You know, every time I see a white strap onto the title, I feel like it's the Intercontinental belt and it's a world title. It's like the world should have the black on it and uh, the Intercontinental should just have the white on it, I should say. But um, the belt still looks clean, though. And they asked him if he's going to defend the belt like Eddie Edwards every week. And he says, no, he's not. That's just dumb. And, you know, he'll invite people that want to face for this world title and talk about guys like Saban and Eric Young and. EC3 being former TNA world champions, and now that Moose can just invite anybody and talk about EC3's too busy controlling his narrative, so he's not getting an invitation. But he called out Follow Bob tonight to face for the title. Um, Jim Miller did end up interviewing Eddie Edwards in the back after what he saw out there, uh, after what they saw out there, what his reaction to it. But, uh, you know, he's willing to defend against anyone. Trey Miguel showed up there and says, Listen, you got something I want, so. I'm challenging for that title next week. So it's going to be official. Eddie Edwards versus Trey Miguel next week for the world title. Uh, so that could be a really good match. I'll say that. Moose came out to go against Fala Ba. Um, quick match, I should say, from this. Uh, Moose ended up winning with the spear. So there's not much to say from it. But then as he looked in the camera and whatnot, next thing you know, EC3 came in. Hit him with like um, some type of like scorpion death drop before um leaving after that so ec3 of course is coming for the title which i would have said i would have called it more on saturday i should say uh, i expected him to still show up to take out moose but kind of what they did the same thing on here uh tonight with him attacking moose and everything it's kind of what i thought would have happened saturday but it happened tonight on this show with ec3 so i kind of figured he was going to be going for this tna title again but um i don't know what i could say from this with um him showing up. Like I said, I thought it would happen on Saturday, but um, they had him show up tonight to take out Moose from behind. So we'll see what comes from this, but I'm sure it's going to be a feud between EC3 and Moose. The Good Brothers were going outside as I guess they were leaving the building. We're going to try to find them some bars, but Man, Man Fulton and Ace Austin drove up in a truck and like, oh, guys, you want to call yourself Good Brothers, huh? Okay. Next thing you know, uh, Reno Scum shows up and attacked them. And everything, but the Good Brothers fought him off, and Ace and Fulton drove off, and um, pretty much said they wanted a piece of him again. So, I guess it's probably gonna be Reno Scum, which is gonna be next week Reno Scum versus Gallows and Anderson. So we'll see where that goes. Rosemary and Johnny Bravo were in a um, apartment, it looked like somewhere, a giant or a loft, and you know he's trying. She's trying to flirt with him and everything, and um, asked them um, if you know it's a way to cook around here because um, everything works with a dash of rosemary. And Johnny Bravo said, you know, he cooks with uh, extra, extra virgin oil. So uh, a lot of a lot of extra in that virgin right there, I should say. And Rosemary said that we will take care of um, 
care of him, everything. But next thing you know, Taya showed up. Then Rosemary says, I thought we were alone. But uh, Johnny Prima said that, hey, she's the one to help rent it out this house, okay? And Rosemary said, you know, uh, three's a party, but we could add more. So Rosemary starts teleporting people to this room. So we got the Deaners, Kylie Ray, uh, tri Team Triple XL, Crazy Steve, Decay, uh, Johnny Swinger, Alicia Edwards, Susie, and... They were all there for some reason. It's crazy Steve ended up walking into a room, which um, I guess it had um, like a camera and whatnot, which I guess is reality TV. So we're having Wrestle House premiere next week. I don't know where this is going or what this is going to happen, which I feel like it could be some funny segments out of just given the people involved that uh, Rosemary teleported to. But um, I guess we're doing something else. It's almost like they deal with the uh, tie with the Real Housewives of uh, Slamtown. Now we got Wrestle House coming in. So I don't know what's going to happen with this. But I expect some good comedy to come from this. I don't know why. I just expect it. Uh, just given the people involved, it could be some really good interactions when you think about it. So we'll see where this Wrestle House go things next week since Rosemary teleported all these people too. But next thing, you know, we got the probably mostly the best match of the night. Uh, the Motor City Machine Guns versus the North 40 Tag Team Championships. This was a badass match to watch. This was great. I loved it. I thought it was awesome. I actually thought the North were going over after they hit their finisher, but I think it ended up with, you know, Saban or I think it was Shelly getting a roll up on um, one of them winning the new tag team titles. So uh, it was an enjoyable match. Great match in general. Uh, I wasn't really sure if the guns need the belts right now and that since they just got back here, but unless it can build something to more feuds because the North has been champions for over a year now with those tag titles, but. I don't know what to expect between um between this. All right, I'm not, I'm not sure um kind of what to expect right here because I just didn't really um see the guns winning right now. They probably could have DQ'd it since the guns just got back. I didn't think they were gonna get a roll up finish, so the North may have it out even though the guns still won clean. They still could have a North uh, the North could have been out from the roll up and whatnot and probably dispute that. I don't know, but I enjoyed this match in general between the guns and um. The guns in the north, um, I liked it. So, like I said, I didn't expect to really see any new tag team titles, tag team championships, champions. But what other tag teams do you got right now? Now, I know we just got the guns and uh, the good brothers right now. But they still need to build up these other tag teams well enough if they're um, going to get somewhere with them. Because they're kind of still on the lot of them. Bottom of the totem pole, and it's almost like they're interchangeable and face each other almost every week. The North are one of the best things on this show, so I didn't really expect them to lose the titles right here. But they still put on a badass match between them and the Motor City Machine Guns, so it was very enjoyable, okay? I did like it. But, um, overall, uh, like I said, this was a Fallout show from Slammiversary. This was a good way to somewhat reset things to get some new feuds started up and whatnot and what's going on. But like I said, with the World Class a Maniac um, Eric Young there, uh, Gals and Anderson going against Ace Austin and Fulton. Um, wow, it's a lot uh, when you think about it. Heath Slater trying to get into the building and whatnot, the main event itself. Just uh, a lot going on in this show, I should say. A lot going on with the Fallout from anniversary like i said ec3 several people so i feel like this is a step in the right direction tonight to where it's going they didn't want to give away too much like i said it's a lot of build up and everything it's not just go from match to match to match they got a lot of stuff to build and I, like i said before a great main event in, in general too between the guns and the north so very enjoyable show for impact tonight like i said it was a fallout from anniversary hopefully they can just keep up the wave and keep putting on good shows from here because like i said they had a very good pay-per-view last saturday and uh I wanted to see how long if they could recover and bounce from this tonight and uh, keep more better stuff coming. I think they had a couple good things here and there. So I did enjoy the show for Impact tonight. Really good. So um, yeah, follow, subscribe. Um, follow me on Twitter at Hooded9890. I actually said comment, subscribe. I said follow and subscribe. Comment, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at Hooded9890. I'm out of here. I'll see you guys later. Peace out. And I'm done with this review for Impact. And we'll see you tomorrow night for... Um, AWNXT. Peace.